Hey guys, Ray from LoveTheRV.com. So a little bit of a tips video for you today. I'm um, often asked by people how we get mail and packages uh, during our extended trips. Uh, we just got back from almost six months on the road going down to the U.S. Southwest and back. We're also full-time RVers, so we don't own a home or anything. So I thought I'd put together a little list of nine ways that we get mail and packages. Uh, might be able to help people out that are just starting this lifestyle or people that are going on, on extended trips. Uh, it's going to be a little different for Americans because I'm Canadian, so a few things will be more Canadian specific. But overall, there's, there's quite a number of things you can use as well. So let's get to it. So number one is uh, I need an address, uh, kind of a residential address for my taxes, my banking, insurance, auto insurance, auto driver's license, that sort of thing. Um, in Canada, there's nothing I know of, like in the States, where you can be a domicile in a state and get a mail service to handle everything. So what I do is I have a sister who lives in Victoria. I often go visit her. I actually have a room there that I can go and stay in if I, if I want to. And she'll handle any mail that comes that's important. Um, she'll open it up and look at it, and if it's something I really need to know, she'll she'll message message it to me over the internet, take a picture of the mail, and I can deal with it from there. But over the years, we've pretty well got everything online. She gets very few pieces of mail nowadays, um, so so that's what I do for our, my really essential mail. Um, next, I have in uh, Campbell River where we stay. Often we're there for three or four months every year. It's kind of a base station for us. So I use a UPS store. I rent a mailbox there. Um, if you pay yearly, I think it's about 15 bucks a month Canadian for me. And that actually gives me a physical street address. It's like a suite number and then that address. Um, so any any postal mail or any packages from FedEx, UPS, Amazon will go to their store and they'll handle it for me. They'll sign for packages and they'll put it aside and then I get an email saying, hey, there's a package for you to pick up and I can just physically go down there and pick it up. I can get quite large packages that way. Pretty well anything that will fit through the door, they'll take. I've even had things up to, you know, <clears throat> 60, 70 pounds show up there and they handled it. And also for my regular mail, there's a keyed mailbox that I can access 24-7 through a, through the store door. So sort of my main mailing address. So I switch pretty well anything over to that mailing address so I don't bother my sister too much with a lot of packages. And there's, there's, there's a third way I can get uh, Canada Post mail, like post office mail. Uh, they have what they call in Canada flex delivery addresses. So that's uh, anywhere you are, um, pretty well every, any city will have a flex delivery address. So I sign up for an account using my address at my sister's place. And once I have the online account, I can have mail sent to a, a different address. A lot of times it's the general post office in that town or in Campbell River. Often I'll use there's a shopper's drug mart that has a post office in the back. So I can have flex delivery packages sent to there. Um, they'll accept pretty well anything that can go to a, that anything but not to a P.O. box. Or they are, no, they are a P.O. box address. So if you have a package that the, the people won't send to a P.O. box, then it, it, it won't go, it won't be sent there. So there's a, some rules there. I'll put a, a link to their page so you can figure it out from there. Number four, this is mostly when I'm traveling in the U.S. So if I'm getting something sent by UPS or FedEx, um, most larger towns and cities will have what they call a UPS access point or a FedEx on-site um, depot. And these are in places like Walgreens, CVS, a lot of drug stores. Uh, even other stores like auto parts stores might have a counter. So you go in there and you tell the person, okay, I want it sent, um, say, UPS to this access point, you give the address, and then you go in and pick it up from the counter and you just give them your ID. So that works out quite well for, for a lot of packages that, say, companies are sending me. Also, um, my UPS uh, mailing box in Campbell River, um, they'll also do mail forwarding for a fee. So if I have a, some letters and stuff that I want to get in the U.S., I can have them forward it to a, a UPS access point and pick it up that way. Uh, another big way in the U.S. is I use Amazon a lot for ordering, you know, RV parts and different things um, that we want online, Christmas gifts. And I can have it sent to what's called an Amazon hub or a locker. 
Now the hubs are physically inside stores, so it's like the same deal. It might be a drugstore or a pharmacy, like something like that, and you go to their, their pickup counter, and Amazon will give you a, an email when it's there for a pickup, um, and they'll scan your barcode or enter the number, and you, you just show them your ID and, and you pick it up. Um, also, this a lot of Amazon have what they call lockers, which is like a big metal filing cabinet, locked doors, and they'll sit outside of gas stations and corner stores, and you just pull up to it uh, and with your phone and put in the code or scan the barcode, and suddenly a door will just flip open, and there's your package. Close the door, and you're on your way. So that's very convenient for us. Um, they're usually lo the lockers. Um, Generally in the bigger cities, there's lots of lockers all over the place. So I just figure out where one is close to me and do my Amazon order and go pick it up when, when I get an email that it's arrived. Um, another way on the road, over the years we've been at this full time, 11 years now, and we travel the states quite a bit, six months a year usually. So I've met a lot of people over the years, even gone and visited them at their homes and things like that. So I've made quite a few friends over the years. So a lot of times if I have some package and I'm stuck and it's too big, um, a lot of things are too big to be sent to these depots or they're some type of dangerous good or whatever, or they only can be sent to a home address. So a lot of times if I ask my friend, hey, can I have a package sent to your house? They're usually more than happy to have me send a package there. So that, that, that comes in handy. So I kind of got a little trail of different cities. I have developed friendships with people. So sometimes I'll ask them if I, if I need to get something. Um, there's also, uh, for U.S. Postal Service stuff, um, there's something called General Delivery. And uh, you can go online. Um, I usually go through uh, kind of Google Maps and, and find the postal outlets. And when I click on it, I can get their page. And from their page, I can see if it does General Delivery. If it does General Delivery, you can have it addressed to you at... There's like a, a, a method to address it so that it goes to the General Delivery post office and then you just go in down in there with your ID and pick up your your parcel so that that comes in handy sometimes another way is RV parks I know a lot of RVers use this method a lot of RV parks will allow packages to come and actually sometimes write to your RV site um, this is a Thunderbird that we stay at quite often Thunderbird RV park and they will uh, accept uh, carrier packages will show up from UPS and FedEx and Loomis and DHL, all sorts of different ones will come. Um, the only caveat is they don't accept any uh, postal mail at all. Actually, this isn't even a postal address, so you have to be careful there. Ask at the office. Some RV park offices will hold mail for you, so it varies between RV park to RV park. And finally, number nine, um, I found out a lot of little tiny rural towns, like little just, you know, 100 people, 300 people live in a rural town, and there might be one general store or a gas station a lot of times if you kind of ask the locals you know wh where do you get packages sent they'll go oh go talk to Martha down at the general store and just let her know your package is coming by UPS and she'll put it aside for you <laughs> that sort of thing so it's always worth asking anyway that's nine different ways that we're able to get mail and packages while we're living this life I hope that uh, comes in handy a little tips for some people if they're thinking of getting into the the full-time lifestyle and uh, or just going for an extended trip and you, and you want to figure out how you can get a package or some mail when you're when you're traveling till next time Ray from loveyourrv.com I get back to enjoying this fine BC weather nice uh, rainy weather no wonder it's so green here cheers folks <laughs>